That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. Okay, my dudes, we are going to go through and talk about some of these must-add running backs now. To be completely honest, the waiver wire, while yes, it's not the most exciting thing, of course, it's more fun to talk about some buy low candidates, some sell high candidates, and I promise you we'll get to that later on this week. The waiver wire at this point of the season is going to be by far and away the most important way that you can be spending your time trying to figure out how to optimize the bottom part of your roster, especially at the running back position, because this is something that we consistently talk about and that you have those league winning players coming out every single year from the waiver wire at running back for everybody who decided to load up on receivers in their fantasy drafts and go, you know what? Well, yes, we may be a little weak at running back here. We're going to be able to go through and most likely be a a dominant team just by the time we get to about week three or week four at the position. I think that you're going to be in luck because there are some quality running back waiver wire options. We'll get to a guy that I really like at the end of the video, but first, please make sure you go down there, drop a like, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. We are going to be going through and making videos like this every single day throughout the entire season and i'm also going to be answering almost all of your comments for anybody who comes out during the premieres to these videos that has the notification bell hit and is subscribed comes out right away you've noticed that i've gone through and i've maybe answered a thousand comments every single week for anybody asking their start sick questions asking their waiver wire questions so make sure you hit the bell next to the subscribe button that way you can come out at the very beginning of the video while i'm in the comment section and answering as fast as i can and you can get your comment in there if not you can always come out to a live stream but yeah that should be it let's go through and let's talk about these running backs and let's go in the list of the most important guy to add and this is not going to be a surprise to anybody, I'm not catching anybody off guard here. Let's go Elijah Mitchell. And with Elijah Mitchell here, I will admit that I was very surprised to see that he did not have a large role in the receiving game on his offense. Well, if you don't necessarily know who Elijah Mitchell is, coming out of college this year in the 2021 NFL Draft, he was actually a sixth round selection where while yes, he didn't necessarily look like he was going to be a bruiser running back where he was going to be able to handle 30 touches every single week and he was going to be 100% a guy that a team could lean on for this three down capability. He did look like he was more so the smaller explosive running back that could also get targeted out of the backfield. So I want to say there's one red flag with this Elijah Mitchell profile and that's the fact that a, he doesn't have bell cow size. Now, trust me, I understand he goes out there and handles almost 20 carries this week, going over 100 total yards. But we have to keep in mind, I mean, he was playing in a backfield that had an injury occur where there weren't as many active running backs that could take touches away from Elijah Mitchell. I promise you Trey Sermon is going to be active this week if Trey Sermon's healthy. And I would honestly expect that Trey Sermon is maybe the running back one in this situation. So I'm not going to be telling anybody to go out there and play Elijah Mitchell right away. And also keep in mind, look at the time that this video is being uploaded. This video is being uploaded on Monday morning ASAP for those leagues where I would know that you have to have some time to get your waivers in. I want to make sure that you have the capability of going, doing your research and making sure you're tracking everything up until the week. So if Raheem Mostert is just giving us positive sentiments that he should be good to go week two. I think Elijah Mitchell is most likely a running back that we still want to be looking to add because he did look very impressive in this situation. And at the same time, it looks like the coaching staff could possibly be saying that they like him more than Trey Sermon. I have a hard time to believe that if you look at the prospects and what they were in the 2021 class, as well as the fact that this team does make the significant investment to move up to get Trey Sermon in this past class. But y'all know, Raheem Mostert, while I actually really liked him as a start for week one against the Detroit Lions, based on the fact that it was a fantastic matchup where it was clear that the 49ers were just going to put up a million points. I mean, Raheem Mostert was someone that we were avoiding in fantasy drafts this year, saying that a rookie running back was going to take that job by the end of the season, because what was the one stat that we have said time and time and time again throughout all of drafts centering around Raheem Mostert and why we did not want to be going and getting him? It's that Raheem Mostert, a 29-year-old running back. We know older running backs are at a in higher increase chance of getting injured. At the same time, Raheem Mostert, one game in his entire NFL career, over 20 carries. I know y'all are all tired of hearing me say it, but 
It was like the most ridiculous thing ever to see people assume that Raheem Mostert was going to be able to handle a starter's workload all year. We have said that there are about five players in the NFL, I think you can say every season, are at a higher chance of injury than what you actually have from the baseline rate. And Raheem Mostert was on that list. I mean, guys like Raheem Mostert, Debo Samuel, Kenny Galladay, it's a very short list. Mostert, we can say, is one of those injury-prone players. So even if we get positive news about his injury not being as severe as initially thought, I mean, I still think Elijah Mitchell is going to be an intriguing play here. Now, if Mostert's ruled out for week two, I think you could actually start Elijah Mitchell in that matchup. I do want to be looking at Trey Sermon, though. I want to make sure that we are trying to monitor any reports that we're going to have going into the week, figuring out what the role could be for Trey Sermon when he's active on his own right because don't be assuming that Elijah Mitchell is just going to be the running back one here the entire season I would imagine that he is a very nice compliment running back but given his lack of size and his lack of usage in the receiving game I don't want to be looking at him as the three down option in San Francisco but nonetheless he is someone you 100% have to add he's playing in one of the best offenses in the NFL running behind one of the best offensive lines and he's a very dynamic and now at this current moment it looks like he is potentially the running back one so Elijah Mitchell you have to add I know we talked about some bad things with Elijah Mitchell at the same time but we have to paint the entire picture here I can't be just trying to sell you on these players we have to be weighing the positives and the negatives and now our next running back this is going to be someone that's owned in about 10% of your leagues. Obviously, Elijah Mitchell's not owned in pretty much a single one, but Kenneth Gainwell owned in about 10% of your leagues here. I have to admit, Gainwell was not a player that I was advocating for you drafting in your fantasy drafts in deeper formats, where in Dynasty and in underdog drafts, people were going out of their way and drafting Kenneth Gainwell in one of the last rounds. And they're all saying, well, yes, you really like the prospect profile coming out of Memphis. While well, yes, he was a very good pass catching running back in college. This was someone that fell to a range in the NFL draft where we know historically running backs in that range don't get opportunities in their NFL offenses. They're more so depth pieces that are going to be guys bouncing from the practice squad to just being a third stringer on an NFL team. And I really didn't want to be making that bet. I thought there were much better options. And I actually thought Boston Scott was going to be used decently in that offense. Well, boy, was I wrong. I mean, here we actually have Kenneth Gainwell coming out nine carries, two receptions, 43 yards, and a touchdown. Obviously, you're not picking up Kenneth Gainwell and going and playing him in your starting lineup right away. However, you're picking up Kenneth Gainwell and you're saying, okay, well, this is a running back that fits a similar mold to what we actually have with some other players that we're going to talk about in this video. This is the exact kind of running back that we need to be targeting and we need to be trying to put on the end of our bench with waiver wires okay so what we're trying to find in the prototype of a running back is someone that we have seen before that is going to have a baseline role in his offense but more importantly he is going to have the upside where if an injury were to occur in front of him he could turn into a three down player and with Kenneth Gainwell, I do think that he fits that mold. And I'm reluctantly saying this, and I'm having to take my L here because I'm already admitting that he has had a larger role one week into the season than I thought we were going to have him the entire year. So now that Kenneth Gainwell showed some flashes in the preseason, now that he is going to have that role that he does profile to be someone that can play on close to all three downs if Miles Sanders was injured, I think you now have to go through and you have to do your due diligence where maybe if you add David Johnson, I mean, David Johnson would just be a straight up cut for someone at this point like Kenneth Gainwell. Gainwell, a younger, more explosive running back playing in a better offense. And at the same time, I mean, clearly there's a path for him to get a decent amount of touches because we have to ask ourselves, if the starter goes down in front of this player, does he become a top 24 running back? If the answer to that question is no, we have no interest. With Kenneth Gainwell, I think the potential answer could be yes, given he's a great receiving running back and given the fact that I mean, Boston Scott's not going to be taking usage at the goal line or anything. So you could have Kenneth Gainwell getting every valuable touch in that offense. So now our next running back is going to be someone that's a little older, a little crustier, and a lot more surprising, Mark Ingram. We mentioned this in the video last night with Mark Ingram. I have no idea how this came to be with Ingram. I was just completely caught off guard. Y'all know we have done so many drafts this year and we are going through doing 18 round drafts on underdog 
every single night. I did over 200 drafts and every single one of those drafts, you had David Johnson, Phil Lindsay, both getting drafted. Nobody was talking about Mark Ingram. Mark Ingram was someone that was moved to this team due to his salary. I mean, I thought there was a 0% chance that he was coming out and he was going to be in the mix for a three headed backfield. Not only was he in the mix, not only did he take touches away from David Johnson and Philip Lindsay, he took all of the touches away from David Johnson and Philip Lindsay. Mark Ingram comes out while only being rostered in 3% of leagues, gets 26 carries, 85 rushing yards, and a touchdown to go along with it. Now, we have to be completely honest here. With Mark Ingram, you're not picking him up and going, okay, we're jamming him in right away. We're starting Mark Ingram this week and this week. We're 100% confident with what we'll have because we have to acknowledge a couple of things. A, this week could easily be the highest scoring week by the Houston Texans all season. Nobody's going to be surprised if that's the case. And at the same time, Mark Ingram got literally not a single reception out of the backfield, which 100% is going to be concerning for Mark Ingram. So yeah, there are red flags in this profile. Still, you don't like the offense. Still, you don't like the fact that he's not going to be catching balls out of the backfield. But at the end of the day, if you can pick up a running back that just got 26 carries in his offense, 26 carries this week, I mean, you have to go to the waiver wire. You have to pick him up knowing the rate that we are seeing injuries occur across the entire NFL. I mean, who's going to be surprised if all of a sudden you're in a position where you just have to thrust him into the starting lineup? You really have no other options. I think Mark Ingram, at this point, he could easily be someone. You're playing during the bye weeks, playing for an injury, so you have to pick up Mark Ingram. Now, our next guy that we're going to go through and talk about here is going to be Carlos Hyde. Talking about a surprise running back. So we knew Carlos Hyde was going to have a role on this team. That's what we came out and said. I mean, with James Robinson, 100%, there was going to be no shot that he had the same exact usage that he had last season. Last season, he was used like Christian McCaffrey. He was playing on over 90% of the snaps for the Jacksonville Jaguars offense because they had nobody else there. Literally, the amount of running backs that see that level of usage it was like three guys in the entire NFL last year, and James Robinson was one of them. It was clear that he was not going to see that same exact role with Urban Meyer as the head coach here. But was anybody expecting, was anybody expecting them to come out and use Carlos Hyde as the primary running back? Talk about old, crusty running backs, Carlos Hyde over James Robinson. And a quick side note, we got a lot of questions in the comment section of the video yesterday going, Mason, um, can we start James Robinson this week? Mason, what are we doing James Robinson? You cannot start James Robinson. You cannot sell James Robinson because nobody's going to pay you a nickel for Robinson. I mean, if you could sell him, take whatever you can get. I know that sounds like a panic sell, but at this point, what are you expecting? This is an offense that looked horrible in what should have been a plus matchup. Carlos Hyde was used as the feature down running back. Urban Myers showed no willingness to give the ball to James Robinson in the slightest. Now with Carlos Hyde here, it's very similar to what we discussed with Kenneth Gainwell. You're not picking up Carlos Hyde and going, okay, well, we got Carlos Hyde. We can go through and play him in week two. No, we're trying to turn the bottom of our rosters. We're trying to get the guys in here that have roles on their offenses. And what would occur if all of a sudden James Robinson goes down next week? What would occur is you have Carlos Hyde all of a sudden as a bell cow level running back who is playing a three down role that James Robinson saw last year. So you can say the same thing with Robinson. Now I think that they're a lot closer than most people want to give them credit for. And it sucks to say, I mean, with James Robinson, I'll say it doesn't suck to say that much. I don't really have him anywhere, which of course is kind of exciting on our front, but still, I mean, Carlos Hyde, very surprising to see this level of usage and you cannot ignore it. And I think you have to go pick up Carlos Hyde. I mean, you're looking at nine carries, 44 rushing yards, and two receptions and 14 yards at the same time. And I know those numbers don't look great. You're going, oh, Mason, he only got nine carries, 44 rushing yards. Are you sure? If you looked at how this game broke down with the Houston Texans taking a commanding lead right away, the Jacksonville Jaguars had to throw the ball, throw the ball, throw the ball. I'm pretty sure Trevor Lawrence had over 50 passing attempts this game. With him having over 50 passing attempts, that really shows us that this was not going to be a game where Carlos Hyde would have ever been effective or any feature down running back for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So what happens if all of a sudden they get in a game that's a little closer and they can decide to run it? Then who knows? Maybe Carlos Hyde does see 15 carries. Now our last running back, really excited to see what we saw from him this week. And I think that he is one of our priority ads 
It's going to be Tony Jones with Tony Jones right now. Yes, it's going to be so hard to take anything away from this game. But even at the beginning of the game, Tony Jones fits that mold of someone that does have that role on that offense. And of course, you could see that role expand if Alvin Kamara was injured. Now, I think, I think that this is going to be an offense that could be very exciting. Now, it's hard to say exactly what we're going to have with the New Orleans Saints. Obviously, five passing touchdowns for Jameis Winston makes you want to get up. It makes you want to go and scream some bold takes here. I don't necessarily know if we can get on board with doing that. However, I think a very safe take that we can have is you want some pieces in this offense at a discount. Tony Jones is going to be one of those guys. He's literally just like Latavius Murray over the past few years, where if you're desperate during a bye week, if you're desperate with an injury fill-in, then yeah, sure, you can start Tony Jones. But what's more important is the asymmetrical upside that you get if something were to occur to Alvin Kamara and Tony Jones steps into that three-down role, then all of a sudden you have someone that is a weekly starter for you. We have seen Latavius Murray be a running back one in fantasy whenever you had Alvin Kamara injured in weekly spurts over the past few seasons. Tony Jones, I think, could do something similar. And yeah, that's all I got for y'all. I know this is a little bit of a shorter video. I'm going to try to get out another waiver wire wide receiver video for you later today. So make sure you go subscribe to the channel, drop a like on the video, leave any comments that you have with any questions you may have about the waiver wire. And please make sure you're going to the comment section and answering others questions. We are all a part of this together. We are all in the flock. Let's try to win our 2021 leagues. So go answer some other people's questions. And yeah, that's all I got for you and have a great day. Thank you to everybody supporting the show on Patreon. We got some new members in MCGC, Brian, Matthew, Craig, Ian, Woody, Colt, Marcus, Jack, and Nicholas. Thank you, my dudes.